All right. Question number three. Um, the team going for uh, a back to back to back. T.O., can Asan Diara make the step up to the starting lineup? Can he be UConn's point guard? That's Borzello's biggest question with UConn. Uh, it's a question. It's certainly a question. I think it's going to have to be something by committee. I love Hassan Diara's uh, toughness. I love the fit with Dan Hurley, but Tristan Newton knocked down shots. Hassan Diara, I'm not sure he's been the guy that's proven that yet in his college career. I do love the, the, him beside Aiden Mahaney. Aiden Mahaney can really score it. And Hassan Diara is a real tough guy. He just doesn't bring that same level of threat from beyond the arc to where you can extend out uh, the defense. That's going to be interesting to watch and see how he's able to progress in that manner. If he's able to shoot the basketball, it's going to be a lot different. If he can't do it with consistency and some of these elongated offenses, he's going to give you a weak point in the in the offense, much in the same vein as Andre Mother Jackson did a few years ago where you could just sit a guy in the middle of the lane. Sean Miller alluded to that uh, during his Slapping Glass podcast the other day. You could just sit somebody in there and you can convolute a lot of things up. DR is going to have to knock down at least 33 to 35% at the minimum in order to keep teams uh, respecting him and make him uh, that threat from beyond the arc. That scares me a little bit. He has all the intangibles. He has all those toughness factors. He gets in there. He does all those right things. But in today's modern game, you're going to have to knock down shots at the very minimum at 33%. If he can do that, he's going to be able to stay on the floor for 25 to 30 minutes a game if needed. Uh, if he can't, he's a liability on that end of the floor, and that scares me. Hassan Diar is the toughest guy in that UConn locker room. No I mean, doubt. He, he's made of steel. He is just a tough you-know-what from Queens. So he will be ready to go. I think he's up to the challenge. Mm -hmm. I, I, I believe that he will conquer this. Uh, I do think that there will be times where teams are going to dare Connecticut to shoot it. I think that this is where the development of Jalen Stewart, solo ball, and company is very important for this team because those guys have been around the block before. Mm -hmm. uh, not didn't play a ton of minutes, but Stewart really showed as the season went on that he can knock down that shot. Liam McNeely, obviously, is going to be used right off the bat. And Caravan... Caravan could go through stretches where he's sometimes hot, sometimes cold. He's got to be consistent, you know, uh, just warm throughout the season. I think he can be. But when it comes to Hassan Diara, I think you can make both these points. Number one, Hassan Diara is not Tristan Newton, and that's okay. Yes. Tristan, Tristan Newton's an all-time UConn guard. And number two, UConn's not asking Hassan Diara to be Tristan Newton. They're, they're asking Hassan Diara to be the best version of himself and to be a guy that when teams dare him to shoot, he's a capable shot maker from time to time. Yeah, I I just I don't think that he's going to be asked to be in the point guard role the way that a, a, you would think of a prototypical point guard, right? Um, if you kind of look at the way that UConn's roster was last year, I think that we would I would expect Aiden Mahaney to kind of be in the Tristan Newton role where he's got the ball in his hands, he initiates the offense, and then at the end of a clock, he's the guy where they kind of rely on him to try to go get a shot. They can't create anything in the offense that, that they run, right? I think we're going to see Liam McNeely kind of playing that Cam Spencer role, so to speak, where he's running off of a lot of screens and being the floor spacer and kind of being someone where you get him in a DHO, you get him off a pin down, maybe get him in a ball screen and let him kind of make some decisions. Um, Alex Caravan is going to do Alex Caravan stuff. Samson Johnson is going to be a rim runner. And I think Asan Diara is going to, it's a different build and they're going to have to tweak the way that they use him. But I think he's going to be used kind of the way that Steph Castle was and Andre Jackson was as someone where in transition, you get the ball to him and let him see if he can go create something. And if not, yeah. then he's going to be a little bit more of a, um, of an off ball weapon. Now he's not the same vertical spacer that Andre John, uh, Andre Jackson was, and he's not as big and physical as Steph Castle was, so they're going to have to kind of get creative with that. But I think that staff can get creative. My biggest question with UConn is, uh, it's just it's simply just the player development, and it's not just the you're just going to have to get some second. You're going to have to get some second or third side options for Diara in order to yes. get him downhill to where at least he's a, it. You're getting enough of a closeout to where he can use his physicality and athleticism to go. Yep. Like that's the thing, and and he doesn't have to take a lot. He needs to take one or two a game, but he needs to hit one of them. Yep. 
Like that's I think the big he shot thirty six percent last year. No, no, I, he's. I think that he'll be able to make enough, and and it's his fifth year, and and he's a tough kid, and he's competitive. Um, my biggest question with UConn is just like how big is the step forward that Jalen Stewart state takes? How big is the step forward that Solo Ball takes? How uh, effective can Samson Johnson be being a guy that's going to be asked to play twenty five minutes a game? How good is Terrace Reed going to be? That's my question uh, with UConn. All right. Question number four. I say all that. I say I, I say all that. Like you, you're right. He shot almost thirty six percent from three. Yeah, but, but with, it, with like those he added wasn't, minutes, like it's gonna have to. Yeah, the, a lot of them were like, like you said, he was left wide open, and he made enough that he became a threat, as opposed to him being like, yeah, the guy that you want running off of. Like it, the, the, he had very high percentage looks. Is I think the way that I would probably phrase that. Yeah, but uh, those are gonna continue though. Yeah. They will. Yes, that, that's it. that's just it. A team's going to pick their poison defensively, and he's going to get those looks. When UConn was struggling, okay, teams were giving certain players wide open looks, and it was the whole. There's a reason why you're open. The thing about Dr. that doesn't get talked about enough. He's a really smart player. Mm-hmm. His IQ is through the roof. Yeah. So he knows. He knows if he is struggling, he'll go to the rim. That guy's not afraid of anything. He doesn't get the yips. He will never get the yips. Like, he is not afraid of anyone, anything. I, I think that was such a gem of a transfer steal from Texas A&M by sure, her. Yeah, it was. Back. It was It was the little known years. steal. Yeah. Buzz Williams could use Hassan DR right now. Yeah, he could. I remember, uh, T.O., when when we... When I when UConn got him, I I specifically remember you on this show being like, "I'll keep an eye on Asan Diara," and I was like, "Hey, yeah, okay, okay, whatever you say, T.O. <laughs> you got the W on that one. Um, yep. All right, 